Aloha Facebook Ohana. It's been a while. It's good to see you guys. It is about 3.35 a.m. Um, Monday morning, April 30th, 2000, in, in the year of our Lord, 2018. Um, I know it's been a while since I came on and talked story with you guys. A lot has happened. A lot of a lot of changes has been going on. Not only within ourselves personally, but even within the collective, major changes. Um, the heavenly hosts have been, I guess you could say, renovating and doing a major overhaul of everything that's been going on. Um, the topic of t my my video today, this morning, is about how we are in a totally different space. Hey, how's it, Dikendri? Morning, brother. We're in a totally different space. Um, we've been through a lot, collectively. Um, and it's going to take about two, almost three months for us to fully understand and fully um, rest in this new state that we are in, energetic state. Um, you guys are seeing major shifts uh, and it is because of the work that is being done behind the scenes in the collective, in the higher spiritual planes that is actually changing the physical uh, manifestation of what we perceive as being destiny. Um, you guys are seeing what's going on with North Korea. And it's like now everybody can take a deep sigh a deep sigh of relief. But we still pull it. We don't, we don't let our gird our loins. We don't let our guards down. But <clears throat> now is the time energetically for us to focus on healing ourselves. And it is uh, like there is a time and place for all things to play out in the grand scheme of things. You know, because... Um, but now is the time of healing and the time of going, doing internal work. Um, the focus collectively right now should be upon the, that we should focus upon our, our divine and perfect health and, and, and healing the battle scars of not only ourselves but of the collective and what we have gone through because we've been through a lot you know and energetically it's been uh, things have been shifting um, oh. and one of the one of the blessings, as well as the challenges that we'll be facing in this present time as we heal the collective, is um, because, because we've not only been assaulted mentally, physically, spiritually, but even to a certain extent we've been greatly assaulted spiritually. And oftentimes it is the wounds, spiritual wounds that uh, the eye that the eye cannot see, that leaves the longest and the most deepest impressions upon the being, the totality of what we perceive as being the who we are, spiritually. Um, and because of the battle scars, a lot of people's ike papa luas have been. Um, I don't want to say damaged, but it has been greatly worn worn spiritually and it may be challenging now as we heal the collective it may be a bit challenging for us to to see the to see the signs um to notice the the hoailona the omens of the signs that happen um but we shouldn't be focusing too much on that part of our spiritual walk right now on, on the part of with the ek because it's time we in the phase of healing now the collective um, and um, what the angels have been telling me what what heaven has been telling me my archangel has been telling me especially angel Michael has been telling me that um, we need to write there's a need for us to creatively um, as a type of like a release and venting and letting go of everything that we've been going through energetically um they've been saying that you know if you can take up the pen and begin to write about your feelings 
share your mana or share what you've been going through. Because, um, and, I, and I, not only within the spiritual aspect, but when, when I, for my spiritual, for my religious and more Christian brothers and sisters out there, um, there is a teaching in the Bible that talks about uh, the two weapons that shall be used against the dark one, against the dark ones, which is uh, the blood of the Lamb and the testimonies of the righteous. The testimonies, which is very important, what a lot of what a lot of um, temples, churches, synagogues, sanctuaries, spiritual sanctuaries, um, oftentimes fall short in, is in the sharing of the testimonies. It is very important that everything that we've been through, and especially when God will help move you through experiences and you come out on the other side of the experiences, having conquered the experience or become having been made an overcomer of that experience and you, if you're able to learn and grow, it's important that you share. It's important that you share the manao because, uh, but within the context of it being as a creative release and outlet, you cannot have expectations of when you share your manao. You cannot have expectations on anybody grasping it. Have no expectations. Because when you have expectations, that comes with plenty. Um, you're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up. Egoically, you're setting yourself up to be let down. But have no expectations of anybody. And, and when you share, it's important that you share your testimonies. That you guys share with your brother, our brothers and sisters. And every opportunity when given the chance to, to share as a creative outlet uh, everything that you've gone through. Because with no expectations, though, and then when it's done in that way, it is free. The energy is free, and to to go out. And then when we do this, when we share our testimonies, other people may see that, and then we go, "Oh wow, I kind of, I kind of go, I kind of go through that, but I never really understand what I was going through, you know." But you cannot have expectations, because oftentimes, in, of, and I see this with my brothers and sisters in the, in the spiritual walk in the in the faith. Um, that they will share the testimonies, but there's so much akka cords, or so much attachments, like and expectations, with these with these um, testimonies, and you end up hindering the flow of energy concerning the sharing of the testimony. You share what God has done for you, with no expectations on anybody, and. It's, it's not going to release and, and what Spirit is telling me is not only myself but a lot of people will, will take to the pen it's, it's important that we and this this may be in the, maybe in the next within the next two or three months there will be a lot of people expressing themselves creatively expressing themselves more um, concerning everything that we've gone through and whether you accept it or not, whether whether you believe in what I've been sharing with you guys concerning the dimensional shifts and how we're in a totally different phase of energy, um, it is we are in a new place. We are in a new in a new uh, state of being, and we are somewhat worn from the spiritual battle. And it's important that we heal now and we focus upon divine and perfect health. Um, and it will be quite trying, both a blessing as well as a challenge for us to see the science now because of our EK, because, because of our spiritual faculties, our spiritual weapons, uh, the faculties that we've used in our spiritual battles have been somewhat worn, and but we're in a phase of healing now, and even the collective, and there's going to be a lot of people writing about their experiences. You guys will see a lot of people sharing their uh, Manao about what they went through, their own personal experiences, what they was going through, as they was going through all this, you know, running through this play of life that we've been going through. Yeah. Um, and where heaven wants, what they should be sharing with me is where they want us to focus our energy is on um, having confidence. Having confidence not only in, not only in, um, Not only in the divine, but also within yourselves, and knowing and and because we we unknowingly create separation between us and God, 
Um, and that's why, like, my, my whole, I don't want to say platform, but my whole, my, not of what I, my whole, how can I say this? My experiences that I've been sharing with everybody spiritually um, has been, without expectations on anybody, has been about me um, coming into more of a divine communion with, with Source and with God. Um, well, and, and that is for all of my brothers and sisters out there from all the different faiths, from all the different backgrounds, philosophies, spiritualities, religions. Um, I've learned that for myself, I've come to accept that the purpose of spirituality, all spirituality, good morning, how's it cousin? The purpose for me of all spirituality is to relieve pain and suffering in the world. It's not about um, creating more pain and suffering. And it's important that we have confidence not only in the divine, but in our innate connection to the divine. Uh, and knowing that when we when we fully accept this awakening and this this awareness of this new state of being spiritually, then all forms of separation begin to fall away, and duality is separation uh, between creator and creation. And God, the divine, has told me on numerous occasions, the numerous infinite manifestations of the, the divine has told me in my in my many conversations with them, um, the sevenfold spirit of the living God, that um, when we look at the divine, we see them as being exalted above us, as being separate from us. And that is erroneously done through our human awareness and our human perceptions. But when the divine looks upon the creation, the divine sees creation as, as an extension of the creator. That it is very much so a part of the creator. And that separateness that we, that we tend to feel or experience as being separate from the divine, from God, is a part of our um, experience here in the physical world. And learning to overcome and to transcend the limitations of our, not only our beliefs, but of our spiritual practices and our traditions too. Because there will be, there will come a time in your spiritual walk when you will be required by God, or by the divine, by the higher source, the higher source, um, to let go of everything that you've learned. Because a lot of those, a lot of, a lot of our spiritual experiences or what we, what we have acquired as being our experiences come with attachment and akakod and then the ego gets weaved inside there. Yeah. And then from it being a wonderful, blissful awakening type of uh, spiritual self-awareness experiences, it turns into a, uh, an opportunity for us to boast egoically of what we have accomplished. And that's why the great teachings, even within the Christianity, it is taught, it's, 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 the Word is taught that, the Word is said. Um, that God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And that, is, when, you, when you really understand the, the, the concept of humility and of humbleness, then you understand that um, it's, about, it's about when you're really in the oneness with God, you, there is no separation. There is no separation between creator and creation. When we are in form, in when we are incarnate in this in this physical body, we, the soul immediately, um, from when the child is born, is, a lot of times that is why the that is why the soul cries. The child cries, because the child becomes instantly aware of the soul becomes instantly aware of limitation. It came from a place of limitless, infinite potentiality, where it exists as the all and experiences life as the all. And then, when it comes into a incarnate form, into the body, it it has its first awakening of, oh my God, I'm not as free as I was, you know. And the, that's why that's why a lot of times the soul cries, because the soul and a lot of souls. Sign up to come here. They, I say sign up, which is like a human concept, but um, for lack of a better uh, 
word or phrase. Um, souls agree to come here to experience life in, the, in this incarnate human form. And then when they reach here, it's like, oh my God, then the reality of being in this dimension kind of hits them. And then they go, and that's why, like, what most people don't know, uh, what the medical world calls sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, is actually what people don't know is that the soul has up to four, up to when the child is up to four years old, can choose at any time to leave and go back to the source. So it's important for the soul to feel loved, to feel welcome, to feel for that the soul knows that no, we will, we love you, we want you to be here, we want you to be in our family. We thank God for having you in our family. And what science does not understand, what they call um, sudden infant death syndrome. There's no cause. The child just stops breathing and then they wahala, they make, they die, they die. It's really the soul changing its mind, turning around and going back. You know, um, and so getting back to what I was saying about us having confidence and where heaven, the heavenly host wants us to focus our energy on, is on us having confidence in who we are and this is non egoically of of you know of our innate connection with God, and that as we awaken to this, we begin to realize that we are not separate from God, that creation is not separate from the Creator. You know, um, the one blessing of duality, um, of the of the separation, is that we gain a more fuller perspective of who we are why we are here and where we came from. For a long time after my awakening, I went through this thing of saying, well, you know, I want to read it myself of all duality, of all separation. And on one level, I was rejecting it. And, and, but now that I'm seeing that the oneness is about everything and nothing all at the same time. That is the enigma of being in the in the oneness with God. And knowing too that it's okay for you to not know. Um, there's a lot of a lot of my friends and family out there that may think, oh you know, the animal animal spiritual connection like you or or like other people that can talk to angels and can see heaven on it. I said if you love, if you love as God loves unconditionally, if you mihi and you forgive unconditionally, like how it was taught to us by Yeshua, when they asked him, you know, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother if when he sins against me? Seven times? He said, Christ gave them a figurative number. He said 77 times 7. Mystical number. Um... I believe what he was saying is, well, how deep is your love for the Creator? And whatever your answer is, how deep is your love for the Creator? Let that be the guidepost for how forgiving you also are of your brothers and sisters, those that hurt you. Most, a lot of times people, our brothers and sisters hurt us unconsciously. They're not aware of how... A lot of times because we... We in the ego. We're not conscious of how. That's why when my mom taught us when we was young, we asked for forgiveness. You even though you never do anything wrong and you believe you never do, you didn't do anything wrong. You still humble yourself to the process. You still ask for forgiveness. That is the essence of oponopono. You know, people say, "Well, how can I take accountability for something I never do?" Well. If you understand the oneness, and if you understand that there is no you and me, there is just the one divine essence of Akua, of God, Aloha, the Allah, the face of the presence of the living breath, the living creator, then there is no separation between creator and creation. Creation is an outward manifestation of the inward awareness and awakening of the divine. And I said, when we look at creation, we look at, uh, within our human concept, we look at people that is handicapped, or ihepa, 
or, or retardation or people that have physical disabilities or physical limitations. We see them as or something defective or something is wrong with them. The divine and God does not make mistakes. Your perception, if there's anything that is erroneous, is your perception of who or what people are. That's that what is that is what is erroneous. And God on numerous occasions has awakened mankind to try and He's giving us countless opportunities for us to step out of our human perceptions and our humanness and to be more in in holy communion or in oneness with the divine, you know. Um but it requires us to let go, to let go. You, I don't want to sound so cliche, but you have you guys have heard that you guys have heard the saying, "Let go and let God," or "Give it up to God." I mean, when I say let go, I mean literally release everything to aqua. Even the indoctrinations, even the things that you were taught. We're talking about releasing and letting go of the things that was taught to you from another human being to you. And just living in that presence with Aqua, with God. And now is the time for us to focus upon the healing, to have confidence in our innate connection with God. And um, always remember to be humble. And what will help us in this healing period help us heal the collective it's also for us to remember to be gentle with, gentle with yourselves you know um, and ask heaven ask heavenly father ask the angels to help guide you to help you malama and to treat yourself with gentleness you know and to be real nurturing in everything in, in the way you think the way you speak the things that you do especially of your, of how you see your, your self awareness, you know, of how you see yourself to be loving. Now we're in a period of being, of us to be, need, the, what needs to be done is for us to be loving and to be healing of the collective. So we're in a, we're in a totally different energetic space, people. It's almost like the world didn't wake up from a bad dream. I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? And um, the more of us that awaken, become aware the more the more we begin to shift the physical fabric of reality and I believe it is possible you know um, know that we are safe know that you are safe know that you and your loved ones are safe regardless of what the world tells you know that um, there is so much being done for you all from in the higher realms, um, I've been for the past month or two. I've been literally, um, I've been piercing the veils. I've gone beyond the seven the seven levels of heaven, um, and to such an extent to where my mom on the other side came back to my nephew and told my nephew. Um, Where's Uncle Bin? Because we we didn't we haven't felt his energy. That uh, my, and even my angel has, exper- has expressed it to me. They said we haven't felt your energy. Where have you been? And they said we feel everything everywhere. But you've been outside of you've been outside of the realm of where we could feel you. And I said, well, I've been journeying. I've been I've been looking, and uh, it's been almost a nightly experience for me. Um, and we're in a totally different space here, people. It'll take about two to three months for the world to kind of settle, the collective to kind of settle into this new state of being, that we're in a totally different energetic state. Um, but I hope this message finds you guys in light and life eternal. I love you guys. I know it's been a while. Um, and even myself, like I've been, I've been guided to... Not post so much on Facebook, because it was it's important for us to learn to not kaukai or to lean upon another flesh, another human being, but for us to go directly. And kalamayo, instead of saying directly, I mean directly, inward, you know, 
because we know the truth, you know, that Akua is really right here inside of us. The love of Akua, the love of the Creator is right here inside of us and in ourselves. So yeah, we're in a totally different energetic space now. Whether, you know, and I'm not talking about where we are individualistically. I'm talking about where we are energetically, collectively. And <clears throat> oftentimes the things that happen in the collective take takes, a, takes some time for it to trickle down into the physical dimension, into the physical worlds. Um, but yeah, I've been, um, oh my God, and like lately, like, my, the spiritual awareness has been has been just mind blowing. Like, not only have I been traveling outward, but I- inward, but outward as well. You know, like two weeks ago, like today we went to a um, a baby a baby party up in Wood Valley for one of our dear friends. Uh, uh, my our brother widow had his baby blessing, um, a baby party, and um, they're from El Salvador, and. Um, Two weeks ago, before I even knew anything about the the gathering today, today which we went to um, up in Wood Valley, I actually woke up with a vivid dream where I saw him. I saw, and I, I didn't even. Apparently, this is his second child. I didn't even know he had his first child. And about two weeks ago, I told Jean and Keisha. I said, you know, I had a dream of Wido that that he had a baby, and um, we was up in the mountain someplace. Like we was up. It was so beautiful. It was like this, the fog, the uhi was when rolling and everything. And Jean was like, and Jean and Kisha was like, oh, uncle, we forgot to tell you that um, next week we're going to have a gathering for Wido and he's having his second baby. I was like, what? And I was like, and we're going to be, and this is all going to be up in the mountain. <laughs> so, though I've, I've kind of kept myself um, away from people and been in seclusion, doing my own thing, uh, not posting as much, not doing as much public um, speaking concerning the spiritual the channeling. Um, I I've still been God has kept me in the loop. Uh, I've been I still see and know and I'm aware of what's going on around us. Um, but I wanted to share the message with you guys. Say you guys tell you guys that I love you guys. God bless you guys. And I pray this message finds you all in light and life eternal. I am the one, oneness. Kavenia di Kiao Kalani. Aloha. Love you guys. Aloha.